monsoon. It's winter out in Nova Scotia. Yeah, it's terrible. And I, I mostly <laughs> deal with the transition cows. Oh no! <laughs> so yeah, these guys are currently being Hi! Actually, compassion fatigue is when you are in a caring position, mm -hmm. a position where your job is to take care mm -hmm. of something and it just takes its toll on you to the point where you experience all these negative side effects right. in your life because have given everything you have and the results still aren't what you want. To make sure you're in the right zone of your mindset right. to be able to be the best farmer you can be. Yeah. Okay, we hope you catch us. I, know, I was going to say next week, but I'm really sporadic, so next time. <laughs> <laughs>
What a day to be moving it though, yeah. to be honest. So you guys have three three farms or three barns? Yeah, so there's two milking barns and then my barn, which is just for dry cows and calves. Cool. Yeah. And you have six siblings and uh, three of you are involved in the farm now? Yeah, so me and my brother Oliver and Hans are partners and we're currently um, work, so we're still working on succession with uh, one other brother. So. Right, cool. So what made you want to be involved in the farm? Uh, I always loved animals, to yeah. be honest. Like that's the real draw for me is working with the animals. I just find like if I'm around cows all day, I'm always happy. That's nice. how I feel. So my four brothers have like a huge influence on me, like yeah. way too big of an influence, and they all went to Waterloo for engineering. Oh, cool. And okay. you know me, like this is like, this is totally me. I'm just like, anything they can do, I can do better, yes, right? Yes. So <laughs> I got an engineering degree. And, cool. But like, it was a co-op, so every four months I would work for four months. Yeah. And I never enjoyed the what, work. Right. Like I would just, so you got to take two off. So there was eight months in five years that I got to come home. And it was like, those were the best eight months oh. of... And I just came home and I worked on the farm and I was like, I'm so happy here. Yeah. So when I graduated, I actually started working for like an ag tech company. Cool, yeah. But they were based in the States and I worked remotely. Okay. And then it got to the point where they were like, well, if you want to, if you want to do any more, you have to come move right. to the States. Move. So it's like I had to choose because at that time I was still working on the farm while doing this. And I kind of had to choose, and my family was like, no, you should just come back to the farm and do office work. Mm -hmm. So I did that, and like, it's not that I didn't like it, but I hate being on the sidelines. Right. I want to be like right in the action, like I want to have a say in the management decisions, yeah. and a lot of the times when I was on the desk, it was like, we've made the decision, now like go pay the bills, you know right. what I mean? Yeah. And it, where we didn't know where I fit on the farm because my two brothers were already in the roles that there were. Yeah. So when this farm came up for sale, where we have our dry cows and calves, they approached me and they were like, do you want to run this farm? And that was three and a half years ago. And I was like, yes, 100%. Like, Good I love calves. You. I love calving out cows. Like, this is great. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, I've been doing that ever since. And then, like, after doing that for a year or two, um, like I approached my family and I was like, I want to become part of the farm. Yeah. Like I want to have a succession deal. Yeah. So we did that, but I'm, that's the thing that is, I think people find hard to understand about me because my husband has a dairy farm okay. and everybody says, well, why don't you just go farm with him? Yes. So you guys, you're both dairy farmers, but you manage yes. different dairy farms. Yes. Oh. Yeah, that's something that for me that was just like so intuitive because I find I don't want any special treatment. Like when right. I work with my brothers, yeah, it's not like I I find you gotta earn your place. Yeah, and I didn't want to just I I didn't want to go to my husband's farm and there not be a place for me. And with my family farm, there was a role that fit perfectly for me. Yeah, and I was like. This is what I want. Do you foresee in the future you and your husband working together, amalgamating the farm? Well, it's crazy because, like, now that I'm pregnant, it's crazy to think about, you know, because your perspective shifts. Yeah. Like, as a woman, you would know that because I'm always like, well, now I'm thinking, okay, well, what's going to be the best for my family? Yeah. Instead of just what's the best for me. But I think that we'll still continue doing what we're doing, but realistically, I know. If if our uh, if our child has the opportunity to buy in to either farm, that's just in my mind. That's yeah. either that's double the opportunity. So yeah. Can you guys uh, come home and eat dinner together? Do you talk about your different farms? Oh yeah. Yeah. And as my husband helps me so much with sympathizing with me with situations. Right. That. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. And it's probably, it might be easier to talk about things because you are a, you're a part in exactly. the business. Exactly, yeah. Oh. Yeah, because like there's lots of things that me and my husband don't do the same way. Yeah. 
you know, for instance, like, I think this vaccine works and he doesn't really like it, right? Right. So it's like, well, that would cause conflict if we work yes, together. But right. it doesn't matter because we work separately and then, yeah, it's a it's a different mold yeah. for a farm Very family. Very interesting. Very yeah. interesting. So this is his farm here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so he has uh, two milking robots. So he has, like, the fancy tech farm. Cool. difficult trying to decide how much maternity leave right. I want to take because, right. you know, I am just, I don't want to take a long maternity leave right. because I want to be involved in everything that happens yeah. and I don't want to be out of the loop, but then you have to be realistic where you say, this is the only opportunity I'm going to have yeah. to spend time with a newborn, you know, right. so you have to be careful and it's, it's different for everybody. Yeah. And you were five months yeah. pregnant? Yay. And yeah. you're having a boy. Yeah. Uh, I was telling uh, Veronica before we were filming how I got the name of our children from the Seed Guide book. You know you're a farmer <laughs> when. <laughs> well, a good friend of mine named her son Acre, which I oh, love. I love it. Fun. Yeah. I love that. Acre and then bushel you could do for a girl or something. Uh, well, my, my brother was like, you should name yours Hector. Yes! <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. You have this notion about agriculture and compassion fatigue. I thought this yes. was very interesting. Yes. Uh, being a co-founder on Do More and trying to help um, farmers with their mental health. I've heard of the term a few times, but to hear someone else in agriculture talk about compassion fatigue, I thought was very, very cool. So what, how do you define compassion fatigue? Uh, compassion fatigue is when you are in a caring position, mm -hmm. a position where like, your job is to take care mm -hmm. of something, and it just takes its toll on you to the point where experience all these negative side effects right. in your life because you have given everything you have and the results still aren't what you want right so you know it's it's way worse like I'm very hesitant to even talk talk about this with farmers because yeah vets and paramedics yes. and everybody has this way worse yeah but it's something that I think definitely affects farmers yeah for that, sure that like for me I didn't know there was a word for it mm -hmm. and then uh, when I heard about it I thought oh man this, this is, is something that I've felt and I've had to figure out how to deal with yeah so I'll be right back I for sure to take this blood sample in. <laughs> so we were at the vet here she comes yeah, back to compassion. compassion fatigue. So an example would be if I'm a vet or a paramedic, um, compassion fatigue would be where I just stop feeling. Yeah, I'm well. very tired. Yeah, or like it can go both ways because like for me, it'll yeah. be like numbness or extreme emotion. Oh, right. You know, like if you have something that isn't really that strange, oh, okay. but you've just had such a hard time lately that yeah. you have like a crazy reaction. Right. You know, where you get too upset for the circumstances. Okay, so go one extreme or the other extreme. Yeah, well, that's that's how I experience it. Yeah. Um, and I know, I know sometimes it can just be like a sign that you're getting worn down. Uh, Emotions are very interesting because I yeah. think our greatest strength in animal agriculture is to be compassionate. Yes. So for me, it's very important to preserve being compassionate. Yes. People in animal agriculture take care of their animals either way. Right. Right. Yeah. But either way, they're going to do the right thing. Yeah. But on the people working in animal agriculture, yeah. if you see the red flags and you don't address them and you don't take oh. care of yourself, you need to be able to step back and ask for additional help. Right. Sometimes. So for me, like an example of that is if, uh, if I'm just having too much of a week and there's something that I know I can do myself, yeah. but then I get kicked by a cow, uh, and yeah. then I'm just done. It's like, yeah. you have to know that's when you call the vet for help. Right, you know, right. So, or that's when you take a break. And I think that, I 
think that that should be okay uh, to talk about in agriculture yeah. that that I know you're going to give the right care to the cow anyway, but it's yeah. not good for you to feel emotionally drained. Right. Yeah. You know. Yeah. There'll be times when, uh, like, I'm up all night yeah. stressed about an animal. Wow. You know. Yeah. And it's like so. It's hard because you have to make sure you're still. You have to make sure you're in the right zone of your mindset. Right. To be able to be the best farmer you can be. Yeah. Make yeah. sure you have the right people to talk to to really get it. Right. So yeah. for me, I met a lot of those people at Canadian Young Farmers. Nice. Who I was still in contact yeah. with. So, so uh, have a support team around you, those you can talk to, being self-aware. Yeah. And then what else? Like when you go, when you have such a hard day at the farm where an animal dies, um, there's heartache. Like what? How do you? How do you cope with that? I have this. So me and my dad. My dad has this saying that you can never do nothing. Like right. If you see, if you see an animal that is suffering, you can never do nothing. Yeah. So that's the first thing that. Okay. Did I help in some way? Right. Right. Did I make it better than if I wasn't there? Right. And then the second thing is, you know, if something went really wrong, how can I learn from this? And oh. I'm going to be a better farmer tomorrow because I went through this. Yeah. So that's something that I really focus on because, like, I'm hyper critical and, like, a little bit of a perfectionist. Yeah. Yeah. And then if something goes wrong, my immediate reaction is, well, you're a bad farmer. And this is going to keep happening, and you're going to be a bad farmer forever. The and voice. Yeah, yeah. So what I have to really focus on is this happened, but because of this, I'm going to save so many cows in my lifetime because right. I know what to look for. I This happened to me, and I can learn from it. Uh, so it's like a change in mentality yeah. where you have a positive mindset, and yeah. you can say, because of this, I'm going to right. That's a really um, cool perspective to have during some, you know, life's hard times to look at it as a learning opportunity. To me, I know how hard that would be, though. Or I can oh, only yeah. imagine how hard that would be in the moment. Yeah, well, if you keep telling yourself that and then the same thing happens twice, oh. let me tell you, that's the low point. I think that you have to set emotional boundaries where... Yes. For me, if I know I've done everything I could do, uh, I am kind to myself. Yeah. So, what else do you do to take care of yourself? What are the What are the things that fill your cup? Fill my cup. Uh, I make drone videos. I enjoy drone videos. Yes. Cool. And this would be yes. such a beautiful area to take <laughs> videos. It is in the summer. Yeah. Yeah, because it's so. I didn't realize how Nova Scotia. It's like the wilderness. Oh, it's so much woods. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's interesting with sleep because that's another part of agriculture culture. Yeah. That sounds weird when you say it ten times. Agriculture culture. I don't know if I could say it ten times. <laughs> agriculture, agriculture culture. I know agriculture culture. <laughs> but especially in dairy farming because yeah. traditionally in dairy farming, you have to get up at four in the morning at right. least to milk cows. Right. So there's this ingrained... Uh, sense of the less you sleep the better you are yeah in especially in dairy farming and for me you know when I was younger it was much of I'm gonna prove to everyone that I can work it just as yeah. hard as they can and now I'm the one to check in on people and say hey listen I noticed you get up at three in the morning and you haven't had a nap you should go have a nap well, good for you, you know and yeah I, I want to make sure that people know that getting enough sleep isn't something to be ashamed of it's yes. something that they need to be efficient yes and that's something with corn planting you know right. we have a very narrow window of corn planting and it was like well who's going to be the hero this year in corn plant for four days straight right and that was one thing that I talked to my brothers and I said listen get 12 hour shifts yeah two people you can keep the planter running 24 hours you know it's just so much safer and it better is. and it's it's surprising how like that's so unheard of yeah in agriculture and now i see that change shifting 
where taking care of yourself is a huge priority. Oh, and it yeah. should be a huge priority. Oh, these guys are bringing coffee. I hope Tim. you don't mind. <laughs> we're going through a Tim Hortons. Hi, can I have uh, two double doubles? Yeah. Okay, thanks. Canadian farmers. <laughs> I'd find working with my brothers. Yeah. Uh, that has been a big thing that I wish people like put work into your relationships yes. with your partners because yes. with my brothers things have gotten so much better right with our attitudes yeah and you're all adults and if you address things heads on and right. if you aren't sarcastic and aren't nippy and yeah. if you're just professional and yeah. treat them like co-workers it can just improve so much oh, yeah. and you have to really believe the best in each other yes and I think that you know naturally if you're working with your spouse or somebody else you're very polite and you're yeah. kind but siblings you kind of automatically have this like little competition oh, yeah. and back and forth and we each have our triggers with each other yeah, yeah. exactly like that's it like your trigger and then uh, I think that we've come a long way with me and my little brother and my older nice. brother because, like, for a long time, it was always, like, who's working harder and who took more time off right. and you took this vacation and I stayed home and worked. Oh, and you start really honing in on those finite details that really, in the essence, don't. Yeah, and, like, in a sense, you tear each other down yeah. instead of build each other up. Yeah. And so, you know, now it's nice because we are at the point where if somebody is taking time off from the farm, they you can be so happy for them yes. and you can say... And then they feel good taking what, the time off. Yeah, yeah, and what do I need to do to help you yes. take this time off? Yeah. Because, and my brothers have just been amazing yeah. trying to support me and their goals are my goals and yes. vice versa. That's it's so been, great. Yeah, it's been really good and so, I think... How, how do you get to that place though like do you sit down and talk like we're gonna talk about uh, how we can be better partners or has this just been a, a four-year transition to be to get to this place I think that everything I think it just is the little everyday things and yeah. I think that it all comes down to appreciation mm. and if you have a lack of appreciation it will just sour every yeah. relationship so every opportunity you have to give your partners appreciation you have to take that opportunity and make it like the biggest deal in the mm. world and and if you give like it just continues of giving right. because yeah. people want to help people who help them yeah. so so true that's been. um we moved back to the farm or back to Saskatchewan to farm I would say about eight years ago and that was the number most important thing to do for us but what will determine our success is how we work together especially when there's three different families coming together with different goals because you oh, have, wow. would have different goals and needs than your brothers yeah. and uh, so we took so much time to sit down and do personality assessments wow. like because uh, the more I know about someone else and even myself right that helps um, work communication That's and then we were deliberate in creating cultural practices or principles oh, wow. and that's how we communicate how we work together and same like what you were talking about and we have it on the wall um, like we're um, committed to each other's success right both personal yeah. and professional we celebrate large and small successes oh wow um, we are grateful for each other you know we have fun um, we give back um, we have accountability those things do go a long a long way yeah that sounds like amazing I'm like we should do some of that personality we should do more yeah and it's it's crazy how rewarding that stuff is and people yeah. like before you do it you don't really believe mm -hmm. you're like oh we're fine it's great but it's like no your relationship your working relationships are one of the most valuable assets that you have yeah well, it's been a slice riding with you. Yeah. No. Thank you for having me and showing me around Thanks for all your coming. farms I and barns. Like, yeah. And where where can people find you on social media? Um, on Twitter. Yeah. Veronica Vermule on Twitter. Yeah. I had to cut off the last bit of my last name. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. I don't think, I think it was already taken or something. Oh, so thank you for taking the time. No problem. And you are so full of wisdom. Uh, I know I learned a lot. Awesome to have people like you in my network yeah. so that if I am struggling with something, 
that you've like I know you've already gone through like Anytime. especially with your two yeah. kids then Anytime. like you can reach out and you know people get where yes. you're coming from yeah and that's the power of support networks for teams and social media yeah. and people. people underestimate how yeah. powerful that is it is yeah, yeah. Well, thank you. No thank you, Veronica. And for all those tuning in, we hope you catch us. I, don't, I was going to say next week, but I'm really sporadic. So next time. <laughs> <laughs>